be guarding Smith. Smith is one of the most explosive offensive players that you'll ever see. He's not afraid to shoot the ball from anywhere. If he gets going, look out. North Carolina State relies on him heavily. Tar Heels are 13 and 6. The Wolfpacks 15 and 4. Bert Smith on the whistle today with Jeff Park and Tommy Morrissey. Burns and Nance get us started. The Tar Heels are wearing some retro unis from the 1960s and R.J. Davis. Retro jerseys. Got it. Thank you. Here is Baycott's first touch against big D.J. Burns with a right hand. 2 nothing Carolina. Fall away jump hook. How good is that? The Wolfpack goes with Smith and Joyner. They're graded together as a tandem. Morsell, Gant, and the big fella Burns, who's also fun to watch, and misses the short baseline jumper. And Davis runs down the loose ball. Carolina vacated the lane to try and get in transition. Down low, here's Baycott again. Back against Burns, and DJ Burns stripped him out of there. Spot up Smith. Front rim miss and the first of the Baycott rebounds. And that's not a bad shot by NC State. They want to get out and go anytime they can. But Traquavion Smith can be deadly in transition from beyond the arc. Leaky Black tees up a three. And the rebound for Morset. You know, Leaky Black, he's better shooting the three west, but I don't know that you want him firing away that early in the shot. And five of his last 18 after the miss there. The old Miss transfer is Jarkel Joyner. DJ Burns is the Big South player of the year a season ago at Winthrop. And look at he and Baycott and Armando stripped it from him. And have something to say about it. Yep. Those two fellas are sitting on go here early. <laughs> Love has been struggling mightily, trying to find his shot. Spent a lot of time in this building yesterday and early today trying to find range. Davis, a back rim miss. And off the foot of Caleb Love, it'll go to the Wolfpack. Well, this we talked about the matchup. Who's going to guard Baycott? Who's Baycott going to guard? Well, these guys are guarding each other, and Baycott just strips it away. One of the things early for North Carolina, Wes, I don't know that Hubert Davis wants them to be so three-point shot conscious. On the drive, Smith threw it up under the basket. Get the ball inside. Let Baycott touch it before you start firing up those three. Two minutes old. The Baycott jump hook, the only basket, and Burns reaches in, knocks it away. Draws the foul. D.J. Burns first, number one on NC State. And, of course, their head coach is 50-year-old Kevin Keats, a native of Lynchburg. Played college basketball at Ferrum. He knows all too well the history of NC State, North Carolina. He's won a game. December of 2020, that's the last time NC State won at PNC Arena during the pandemic against Carolina. But the Tar Heels have won the last three since then, and eight of the last nine in this long-standing series that's almost 110 years old. Baycott, and a bounce pass toward Nance, and Jarkel Joyner will be ticketed here. It'll be his first and the second on the pack. Gant switched out. Yep. And Nance did a great job rolling to the basket, and Joyner was just trying to hang on for dear life until some help came. Baycott for Davis. Returns it to Armando. Step back against Burns. And the rebound for Traquavion Smith. Look at this guy. Blur to the basket. NC State on the board. Now it's easy to say, boy, you need to stop him in transition, but that's hard to do. Yep. Here's Love. Morsell finds him defensively for the pack. So here's Nance mismatched inside again. On Morsell. Beat Nance. Too strong. Rebound Baycock. Armando and one. The foul is on junior Greg Gant. His first. Wes Armando Baycott is just a relentless offensive rebounder. Burns goes to try to help out. Maybe not. Maybe you let Pete, maybe you let Pete Nance shoot that jump shot. And because he goes to help, nobody's there to block out Baycott. North Carolina overall is a team. They're not the kind of offensive rebounding team that they've been in past years. But Baycott is just relentless in there. Armando Baycott five. NC State 2. Actually, Turquavion Smith 2. 
Baycott gets about 10% of North Carolina's missed shots and has offensive rebound. Well, the Stars have shown up here early, right? Exactly the guys we've talked about. Here's Leaky Black matched up against Smith. That ought to be a fun matchup. Yep, uses a Gantt screen. So you can lay off Gantt. Gantt's not going to hurt you with a jump shot. Gantt will spin into traffic here and turn it over to R.J. Davis. Carolina three on three, trying to get an advantage. Here's Nance. Black tees up another three. Short. Nance tried to keep it alive and pulled out of there. Here's Joyner, and then Black punched it away and will draw the foul. First on the grad student from Concord, North Carolina. And there is plenty of Old North State flavor on the floor today for both schools, Wes, as you might expect. It's not that Leaky Black can't make a three. In ACC play, he's now six out of 25, so he can make them. But I'm just not sure I'm a fan of the early shot clock threes by Leaky Black. Ebenezer Dewana was on the floor for a heartbeat with Gant, and he has come off the floor. And we get our first look at Ernest Ross, the 6'9 sophomore from Alachua, Florida, wearing 24 for the Wolfpack. Kevin Keats can dynamically change a lineup up or down in terms of its size, Dan, with just a couple of guys. Burns and Baycott. DJ with the left hand. And Nance pulls it away. Boy, that's a great matchup. Burns just can't get around it. Love spots up from deep. Back rim miss. The struggles for Caleb Love continue. Now eight of his last 33 from three. Ross tees up a three. Oh, Ernest Ross's third three of the year. Makes him 12 of his last 14 from the floor. And the game is tied at five. And all those threes are in ACC play, Wes, and they're all in the last couple of games where he has been so good for NC State. Davis trying to beat Morcel to the hoop. Here's Black again with 10 to shoot. Against Smith. Nance fires away. Wes, that's a really good job by North Carolina. You get the ball inside. That time to Nance rather than Baycott, but it forces the defense to collapse and you get an open three-point shot. So the teams have exchanged threes. Ross buries one at 6'9", and 6'11", Pete Nance fires away from behind the line. Baycott another rebound. He's got four here early. Love off a screen of Baycott. Back rim miss again. Pulled down Joyner. Well, he's looking to push. Sure is. Ross was stepping out of bounds. Turned over by the Wolfpack. Third on the NC State. North Carolina with an early three-point lead, but we got guys standing behind the line. Ernest Ross, a three. And a moment ago, Pete Nance for the Tar Heels, who lead by three. Oh, presented by Subway. They've been playing almost 110 years. Dan, all I can tell you is in February of 1913, <laughs> NC State won 26 to 18 at the Raleigh Auditorium. But Kevin Keats has seen time and again the series as a child growing up in Lynchburg. He's talked about that. Hubert Davis did in Northern Virginia. And of course, Dean Smith and Norm Sloan, Everett Case, Frank McGuire. And we could go on and on and on about a series that's better than a century old. Well, and it's it's a tremendous rivalry, Wes. When I first started doing this, a guy told me that a true NC State fan never roots for North Carolina under any circumstances. And he elaborated. He said if the fate of the world depended on North Carolina beating the Soviet Union, <laughs> NC State fans would root for the Russians. Well, it's had its moments. It's had its players. It's had its coaches. And today we're fortunate to be courtside for meeting 243. Here's Baycott. Skip out for DeMarco Dunn. Back rim miss of a three, and Carolina's living on the line here early. Now, I don't mind that one so much. Smith lost it on the drive out of bounds, turned over by the Wolfpack, and that's their fourth. Yeah, that's seven out of the 12 field goal attempts for North Carolina uh, that has been a three-point shot, but at least that one was inside first. And that time, Traquavion Smith stopped himself losing the ball. That's now four turnovers for North Carolina State. You saw Kevin Keats put that press on, even off the turnover. Now, you want to pressure these North Carolina guards. 
to make it difficult for them to throw it inside to Baycock. Yeah, Love has come out, of course. DeMarco Dunn on the floor. You saw the three a moment ago for the sophomore. Six to shoot. R.J. Davis, scoop and foul. And who did get on NC State? Jeff Clark out from underneath. And Marcel. It's on Casey Morsell. <laughs> Wes, one of the things I think that Armando Baycock can do is if he catches the ball on the outside and North Carolina clears a little room for him, I think he can drive by D.J. Burns. And we saw a sequence a moment ago where I thought that was kind of what the objective might have been. Here's R.J. Davis at the line. This is the best free throw shooter in the ACC at 88%. 65 of 74 on the year, and the first one good for his first point. Well, so when you're the best free throw shooter in the ACC, it's incumbent upon you to get to the line. Mm -hmm. So that's really a good job by Davis to take the ball into a position where he could get fouled. Carolina shooting almost 74% against the league, and the second one good. First points for R.J. Davis, who's averaging better than 17 in his last five games, including a blistering 16 of 28 from three coming into the ball game today. Wes, do you have the feeling that the Wolfpack's going a little too fast? Smith launches. No, I don't. No. Okay, not now. <laughs> no, I think they're just fine, right? <laughs> Zero wants the ball, and the pack to within two on Traquavion Smith's second field goal. You know, if he wants the ball, I'm giving it to him. Absolutely. Baycott trying to help Davis with the screen. And that got stripped away, turned over by Carolina, and here's Smith trying to get the Wolfpack in transition. But that's what you don't want to do if you're North Carolina. Oh, my heaven. And deep, rimmed out, Nance the rebound. Kevin Keats even kind of thought that might be a little beyond the range of <laughs> I, you know, the sophomore. I, and here's a steal, and this is Joyner against Dunn, and it will go and one. They're adding a foul on it, I believe. Tommy Morrissey, and the foul yes. is going to be called on Dunn. Joyner gets credit for the steal in the basket. North Carolina bench a little upset that there was no foul called on the steal. But Joyner's a really good defensive player. He does that. He picks that one cleanly. And if you're done, Wes, you know, not very often you're going to block one of these shots. Just let that one go. So Jarkel Joyner, 80% at the line. And he puts the Wolfpack in front. A three-point trip. First lead of the ball game for NC State. And you see Seth Trimble's coming to the lineup. The freshman from Wisconsin who's averaging 15 minutes a game. And Ebenezer Dewana back on the floor for Kevin Keats. And Burns will get a break. And Trimble, I think, is in the game to guard to Quavion Smith. And Trimble noted for his defensive ability. North Carolina coaching staff would like to be a little more aggressive offensively. Entry pass knocked away. Here's another Carolina turnover. That's two in a row. Smith the runner and gets the roll. Well, you just can't turn it over. These guys are going to make you pay for it. Five in a row by the Wolfpack to take a three-point lead. Tremble now against the sophomore Smith. And a hand check called on for Quavion Smith. Kevin Keats thought that might have been a little ticky-tacky from Jeff Clark. It's the first on the sophomore from Greenville, North Carolina, and five now on the pack. Wes, Smith came out there and put both of his hands on Davis, and by rule, that's supposed to be a foul. Caleb Love comes back. We're going to get our first look at Dontre Styles. And here's Carolina now starting to dig into the bench a little bit. And they don't have Puff Johnson today. He's out with a sore right knee. So they have used a lot of different lineup combinations recently, Wes, and injuries have been the primary factor. They caught on Dewana. And Ebenezer Dewana is going to be called for the foul. And that will get us to a timeout. To Quavion Smith, Jarkel Joyner, the power company of the pack, has pushed NC State to a three-point lead here in Chapel Hill. All in for all time. Come for it all. Well, it might be our biggest college basketball Saturday of the year. Next Saturday on ACC Network. But, Dan, the one here today might be one of the bigger games the league has, at least in the month of January, when it relates to the big picture. Right, with no, no question, Wes. And, of course, this is Joe Lenardi, where he's got the ACC team slotted. 
And this is a very important game for both of these teams. Into the ball game is LJ Thomas. He wears number four for the pack. Stayed on an eight nothing run to get to the three point lead. Here is Thomas, freshman from Plant City, Florida, who's played 10 or more minutes in each of the last four for Coach Keats. Joiner against Dontrez Styles. It's just one on one, though. Five to shoot. Styles finally slipped and an air ball by Joiner. That they got gathered. I think if you're the Wolfpack, you've got to move the ball a little bit. Carolina's gone almost four minutes without a field goal. Just the free throws by R.J. Davis. Here is Baycott. Dumps it for Styles. Baycott's tap follow no good. Dewana couldn't handle it. It will stay with Carolina. You know, Armando, ba Armando Baycott made a nice pass on the interior. I think maybe he should have shot the ball, but he makes a nice pass. And then again, he's so disruptive on the offensive end, he's not going to get credit for that offensive rebound, but he's the reason North Carolina got it. Baycott one dribble. Now got to get rid of it. Does so to Love. Tend to shoot. Caleb Love's looking for his first point. Here's Trimble. And he lost his footing against Smith. Turned over by Carolina. They're fourth. Here is Smith again to the basket. Threw it up on the window, and Ross follows it. Ernest Ross has got a three, and now a tap follow in traffic. And the Wolfpack lead is five. Wes, they run no plays for Ross, but he is so active getting up and down the court. He finds opportunities. Love working against Morcel. Got to get the ball inside to Baycott. Armando with a high screen out of the corner, Trimble. Now here's Baycott with Dewana defending. Back over the right shoulder, rimmed off. He was off balance. Yep. Good job by Dewana at the post. Absolutely. Morcel, three from the front. Good. Casey Morcel, largest lead of the day for the pack on the 48th triple of the year by Casey Morcel. And Kevin Keats's team has won four straight, but they're two and two on the road in the ACC. And those two road wins are wins that get you better. And he knows them. And they've been layered building wins, it seems like, Dan. Well, they have really ratcheted up the defensive intensity, Wes. They started the game, I think, a little tentatively on the defensive end, but no longer. Styles a three. Spins off. Baycott the rebound and the stick back. And maybe that's the best offense. Just shoot it and let Armando Baycott go get it. 13-2 run by NC State. Holding to a six-point lead. There's the runner. Smith can't find it. Baycott another rebound. He's got eight. That was a little long for a floater. Love. Done offline with the three. Back rim miss and Ross collects. That was a great job by Dewana. He didn't even try to get that rebound. All he was worried about was blocking Baycott off the board, and he managed it. Smith and a foul on Ross. Oh, no, it's on Tremble. It's going to be on Seth Tremble yes. here, Dan, out in the midcourt area. It'll be his first and three on the Tar Heels. Quick reminder to you. Quadruple header of basketball next Saturday on ACC Network. One o'clock Eastern time. The Pack and the Deacons at the Joel in Winston-Salem. And then at three o'clock, Duke is in Atlanta presented by Food Line to see Georgia Tech. You'll also get to see Florida State and Clemson in Tallahassee presented by Subway. And then Bonner and I'll be with you from Blacksburg for the Orange and the Hokies to cap off a quadruple header of basketball on ACC Network. Burns spins, that time scores. Left hand move, DJ Burns first basket. But Nance just not strong enough to hold him out of there. Baycott good. Eight point game. Tar Heels only the Baycott field goal through a bit of a drought. And now a foul on LJ Thomas against RJ Davis. Wes, what I think you see happening here is the referees are trying to control some tremendous physicality out on the perimeter. These guys are fighting through screens. The guards are pushing at one another. The fouls have really piled up for North Carolina State. Yep. 
Tar Heels are in the one on one. Here's Davis, whose only points have come at the line. And the first of the one and one is good for R.J. Davis. He doubled his stats a season ago in Hubert Davis's first year, what he did in 21. But for me, Dan, this is the guy, when healthy, that's the outside to Baycott's inside. No question. And uh, second free throw, good. Over his last few games, he's finally healthy. He had some problems yep. with his shooting hand early, but he's over those now. But four games of 20 or more, including 27 against Wake Forest. Carolina may need to find a 20-point guy and then some. Well, Joyner dominating the ball again on this possession. And turned over. Here is Black. <laughs> Live ball turnovers were a concern for Kevin Keats. Here's Smith on the drive. Nance tiptoed the baseline to control the rebound. Hubert Davis telling his guys to go. Kick out for Leaky Black, who clutched on one at about 25 feet. And thought the better of it. Davis spot up on Burns. <laughs> Triple gives Davis seven. And look out. They're going to go to the deck. Ten second violation. Yep. Burt Smith's going to call the ten seconds. And it's going to go to Carolina after breaking the action. The defense, Dan, sparks this. And Leaky Black, defense to offense. This Wolf is what he can do really well. <laughs> Wolfpack leads back to Chapel Hill in a moment. But your game, you know he's going to walk a mile in those shoes, Dan, bare minimum. And this is why. His team is playing really good. But as you said at the top, this is a quad one opportunity for NC State. Well, Wes, and in the way they figure things these days with the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee and the net, you know, you need to get as many quad one wins as you can. The Wolfpack, that's what they're looking at, just trying to pick up one of those. Those are, you know, the 27 in the net. Well, that's nice, but how many quad one wins do you have? They've got three. This would be four. Love all the way through, almost turned it over. Look out. Davis finally comes up with it, launches with the shot clock going down, and he breaks it home. Goodness. Ten for Davis. And Carolina on a 10 nothing run to take the lead. Wes, and one of the reasons they're on this run to Quavion Smith has really been forcing things. And now I think Smith picks up a foul. Yep. And he'll become the first NC State player with two on the eighth against the Wolfpack. West, this three-pointer is amazing. We saw one of these earlier today over in Durham. Jareek Whitehead hit something very similar to this. The shot clock's running down. You're at half court. You launch from three. Now, Whitehead, I don't think, banked it in. Okay. So, Quavion Smith, the first NC State player with two. R.J. Davis has been the maestro of the comeback for Carolina. And the free throw on the front end of the one and one is good. I thought, as I said, Wes, I thought that Traquavian Smith really started to force things. Right. And the Wolfpack turned it over a couple of times. And you take bad shots and turn it over, particularly when you're on the road. You let the other guys get rolling, and the Tar Heels are rolling. And Davis hits them both. He's got 12 the hard way. Two threes and six <laughs> of six line shooting. Well, and that three wasn't exactly one of those threes wasn't exactly an easy shot. So it's even harder than you mm. your statement indicated. Yeah. I think the Wolfpack needs to get the ball inside to Burns. He's trying to help Thomas with the screen. Now DJ with Baycott defending. Now Thomas needs to get out of the way so Burns can have some room to operate. Left hand jump hook and one for DJ Burns. And Armando Baycott's going to draw his first. That's four on Carolina. 
And this is what DJ Burns will do to you. Wes, we've seen so many times he doesn't necessarily establish position in the low post. He gets the ball out away from the post a little bit, then worms his way in there with the dribble. And he's just hard to guard. He's got a nice touch in there. He can pass the ball very well, so you're reluctant to double team. He's got five. Wolf packed to within one, under six to go in this first half. Caleb Love still scoreless. It's working against Morsell. Now Baycott with Burns there. Back to the right hand and Miss Badley. Gant clears for State. It's just hard to create the kind of room you want against Burns. Out of the corner, Morsell is tough from there, left it short. Now he had all day to shoot that yeah. one, West. Normally that's an easy one for Morsell. Yeah, typically very reliable on the corner three is Casey Morsell. Davis trying to set up the Baycott screen. Here's Love over the top of Thomas. And it rattled out for Caleb Love. One point lead for Carolina. The Wolfpack star, Terquavion Smith, on the bench with his second foul. And a big stretch for North Carolina State without yep. Smith. Here's Thomas weaving through. Knocked away, and we're going to get a foul on Morsell. That'll be his second. Ninth. On Kevin Keats's team with 4.52 to play. One and one coming up for Carolina. Don't forget ACC women's basketball. Duke in North Carolina going to be a big part of what we're doing on Sunday, January 29th. Louisville and Syracuse get our coverage started at noon. Then number 13 Duke at Florida State at 2 o'clock presented by Food Lion. And then, of course, the rest of the afternoon you'll get North Carolina visiting Clemson at 4 and then the Commonwealth Cup on the line in women's basketball for Kenny Brooks and Virginia Tech having a terrific year as is Virginia. It's at six o'clock. It's a quadruple header of women's basketball on ACC Network always available on the ESPN app. RJ Davis is been the man here for Carolina. He's got 14 of Carolina's 26 here in the first half and eight of them have come from the free throw line. Yep. Joiner. He's Joiner is, is just pounding the ball too much. The ball has to move. Davis has been very good defensively against him as well. Yep. Here's Morcell against Leaky Black. Now Burns with seven to shoot. See that just totally clear out for him. And the left hand move good for DJ Burns. Seven for the big fella from Rock Hill. NC State to within one. Joiner gambling against R.J. Davis. Here's Baycott. Davis on the cut. Layup good. He's now got 14 of Carolina's last 16 points. Does R.J. Davis stand? Boy, he's really been something, Wes. Joiner, and that's under heavy defensive pressure. Joiner's been all over him. Under four to go. Tar Heels by three. Burns back at it. And Baycott going to get his second. So Armando Baycott draws his second. That's five on Carolina. R.J. Davis is stirring the Tar Heels here in the first half at Chapel Hill. I'm a screen addicted tween. And if I'm not posting For the remainder of this half, Terquavion Smith went to the bench at the 619 mark on his second foul. Now Armando Baycott has picked up his second for Hubert Davis's team at the 349 mark. And for Carolina, it's been R.J. Davis's show, Dan. Well, R.J. Davis has made a couple threes. He only has one two-point basket. He's got eight free throws. He's been very active. He's also been really good so far on the defensive end. Baycott's got nine rebounds here in this first half. Needed 17 coming into today. Here's Burns underneath. He will feed Ross, who lost it on the way up. And it's basket like interference. Basket interference on the Wolfpack. Yep. Yeah, the ball was in the cylinder, and Ross, he didn't mean to. The ball just slipped out of his hands, and he grabbed the rim. At that time, they came to double team against DJ Burns. Yep. And Burns is a very good passer. That should have been a basket for the North Carolina State Wolfpack. This is the ACC rebounding ledger, and you see Baycott. Lynn Chapel's been passed, so is Dale Davis. Tyler Hansbrough is next on the list. 
There's some names on that list. Yes, there are. And Jalen Washington, the freshman who's been playing some strong minutes for Coach Davis as of late, could not finish. So it's still a three-point Carolina lead. Coming up on three minutes to play. Joyner with Morsell. And we also see Breon Pass, the sophomore from Reedsville, North Carolina, into the lineup for State for the first time. The best offense has been to get it to Burns. And here it is with Washington trying to tag on the big man. Burns backs him all the way down and scores. Nine for D.J. Burns. Black tried to, you know, he went down and double-teamed late, but <laughs> Burns, yep. he can just operate in there. A gifted big man playing basketball, an incredible touch, Dan. Every time you see him live, you're just amazed at how good a shooter he is and understanding where he is on the floor. There's a Wolfpack foul on Ross. That'll be his first and 10 now on State. Understands where he is on the floor, understands where everybody else is on the floor, uses his pivot foot very well. He's got great feet, he's got great hands, he's got great touch. And he's, he's the guy who has kept North Carolina State in this game. Leaky Black at the line to shoot two. He's got the steal and dunk for his only point. And the first one good. Kevin Keats has been forced to kind of put DJ Burns out there for more minutes. I remember a couple weeks ago we were in Raleigh for the Duke game. There was some concern, but Burns has responded since the Dusan Mahorsic injury, Dan. And he has become a productive piece of what this season's going to be for the pack. Well, he has, and Kevin Keats told us he wanted to play about 20, 25 minutes a game, but recently he's played well over 30 minutes a game, and he's been the offense here recently for the Wolfpack. Nance got some help from Love. Out of the double team, quickly for Morsell's three. Got it. Casey Morsell's got six. Chris Ball movement by the Wolfpack rewarded. And it, Burns is not going to get an assist for that, West, but it was his pass out of the double team that created that opportunity. Great ball movement by North Carolina State after the ball came out from down low. Tied at 30. Davis tries to fight through and then turns it over. Love pats his chest to say that one's on me. But, and it is on Love because Davis anticipated that Love was going to go to the corner where there was an opening, and Love didn't see the opening, and he went the wrong way. Smith stays on the bench for State. Baycock for Carolina stays there. The drive by Joyner, last touch by Burns. And it will belong to Carolina. Don't forget, don't forget we've got amazing fans across the ACC, and this winter we need your help. ACC Network wants to experience each sport from your perspective. Snap a pic, take a video, tag it with the hashtag all the devotion, post it on your social. You might see it on ACCN. 95 seconds to go first half and an unforced Carolina error there. 30 all the score in Hubert Davis's team. Just a frustrating mental error. Dan, uh, nothing it else. was a very bad bounce pass. You can't throw a bounce pass at somebody's ankles. All right, now the last time they got the ball, the Wolfpack drove the ball to the basket without Burns touching it. I don't you think Burns has to touch the ball? Absolutely. Here is Joyner. Out front, Ross thought about the three to the basket and missed the layup. Nance the rebound. Here's Davis ahead for Black. Oh, Washington was wide open, and the pass from Davis got deflected over the end line. It'll stay with Carolina. That is great hustle by Ross. You're right, Washington was wide open because Ross got tangled up with the photographers, but he got down the court really quickly. Lots to like about Jalen Washington, the 6'10 freshman from Gary, Indiana. Here's Love. Caleb still scoreless in this first half. To Washington, now back for Love and a deep three. Oh, boy. That will warm the hearts of Carolina fans, Dan. Wes, and now I think it was one of his worst looks of the afternoon. He wasn't facing the basket. He wasn't on balance, but he knocks it down. Three-point lead for Carolina. Burns skips for Joyner. Tried to attack. Here's Morsell from in front of the Tar Heel bench to tie the game. And again, when the ball goes inside to Burns, the North Carolina defense has to react. And Casey Morsell has been the beneficiary. Tied at 33. Five-second differentials. We wind down the first half. And Hubert Davis will take the use-it-or-lose-it timeout. 
Locked up at 33. Late in the half at Chapel Hill. Hi, I'm Jeff from Nuts.com. When my grandfather started this business in 19... Back with Dan Bonner, West Durham, Smith Center in Chapel Hill. Locked up at 33. We thought we might have a good one. First 20 minutes, it hadn't been pretty all the time. <laughs> well, but it's been competitive, it's been fiery, and we've seen some terrific basketball. I think, Wes, it's exactly the kind of game you would expect in a rivalry game where there is an awful lot at stake for each one of these teams. Carolina will have the ball. You see the differential shot clock to game clock as we wind down the opening 20 minutes. <laughs> Bird Smith trying to get Kevin Keats off the court. Yeah. So they can throw the ball in bounds. I think Kevin Keats would have been fine to Kevin, stand out there and defend. Kevin does not have a seat to sit in. That's the thing that you notice about NC State's bench. 15 to shoot for Love, who just hit the big three a moment ago. And then Morcel answered for the pack. Now 10 to shoot. Got to worry about the five-second call. Here's the five. Three to shoot. Love going to take it on the drive. He tried to punch it on Burns. Slapped up. Nance tried to get a hand on it. And then a foul going to be called. Tommy Morrissey the whistle. And it's on Jalen Washington. Or no, Casey Morsell. Well, DJ Burns does not have a great vertical, West, But he is 6 feet 9 and 275 pounds. It's hard for a guard to get it over him. And Ross is trying to come from behind. It's Ernest Ross with the foul, Dan. I said Morcell. So here's Jalen Washington to shoot his 20. To shoot the uh, 16th free throw of the year. And he is 10 now of 16 at the line. Well, if you're North Carolina State, what you got to make sure here is that you block out so you don't give them a cheap one. And Kevin Kevin's Keats is going to call time. If, to, if for no other reason to say that, right? <laughs> Step aside in Chapel Hill, tied at 33. There's always a fresh. And as Jalen Washington hit the back end of the two shot try, a foul was called in the backcourt on Carolina. Do you have an invention idea but don't know what? And RJ Davis, his first. So now with 2.3 left, here's the inbounds to Joyner from beyond the midcourt line. And that will get us to the halftime. Carolina 34, NC State 33. R.J. Davis' 16 leads all scores. Stand by, here's Kelsey Riggs and the nothing but net. Well, that's Greg Gant with Terquavion Smith, Jarkel Joyner, DJ Burns, and Casey Morsell. And keep in mind that Terquavion Smith and Armando Baycott both sat out the last few minutes of the first half with two personal fouls. Let's see if North Carolina State goes right to DJ Burns to see if they can pick up the third on Baycott Earl. Jarkel Joyner against R.J. Davis, and here is Burns with Baycott. Playing just off the big man. Burns a little fall away left of the lane. And the rebound hit the deck before Davis cleared it. And Carolina trying to go to Baycock. Armando. And Burns going to commit the foul. That's his second. Starts the half for the Wolfpack. That's, that's sort of given Burns some of his own medicine. Baycock has the ball away from the basket. And takes a couple of dribbles. And if you're... If you're going to allow Baycott to do that, it's going to make it very difficult for Burns to play him one-on-one. -on -one. There goes Baycott right back at him with the left hand. Now for Armando Baycott. Closing in on his 61st career double-double. And Carolina's all-time rebound record. He's got nine points and nine rebounds. Joyner. He'll launch off the gant pass. Front rim miss, Black the rebound for the Tar Heels. Jordan Rose struggling today. He's one for five, and generally he's a barometer for North Carolina State. If he plays well, they play well. Here's Baycott again, reversing in traffic on Burns and draws the third on DJ Burns. Second on NC State. Both have gone to the big foul for Mark Hill. Now Baycott does a nice job just going right to the basket against Burns. And, you know, and Burns, they haven't been able to handle Burns defensively, have the Tar Heels. And so one way to handle a guy is get him to go sit over on the bench, attack him on the other end. 
Anytime we can talk about the kangaroo kid, Dan. <laughs> Baycott free throw good, gives him 10 points. Now he's closing in on that record. He's tied with Billy Cunningham right now. And folks, if you love college basketball, go dig up the numbers from the early 60s on Billy Cunningham. Terrific player in the NBA, closed his career playing in the ABA with the Carolina Cougars, but as a college player, Dan, he revolutionized the game a little bit. 11 for Baycock. Carolina lead has jumped to five. Four in a row by the Tar Heels. Smith on the drive, scores easily over Nance. Terquavion Smith's got nine. I thought both Smith and Joyner pressed a little bit in the first half. I think it would help North Carolina State if those guys just slowed down a beat. Now, now Burns has to be really careful here. Yep. Kevin Keats does not have anybody waiting at the table. R.J. Davis for Leaky Black, 10 to shoot for Carolina. Black fall away. Bounces off, Burns collects for State. That's pretty good defense by Smith. For Quavion. Had to drop Nance and then almost threw it away. Love couldn't control it before he reached the Wolfpack bench. Wilson, another thing Burns has to be careful about is setting an, elite, an illegal screen. You know, he's got those three fouls. He's been very active setting screens out at the top for the Wolfpack guards. Got to make sure he gets himself set. Casey Morsell got banged on the right shoulder, went to the other end of the floor to kind of shake it off. And he's back here in the forecourt for NC State. And it doesn't look particularly shaky. Here is Smith oh. on the drive and Baycott's third. Terquavion Smith slithers to the basket. His fifth field goal gives him 11. And Armando Baycott's got his third. So Burns and Baycott square off in the fouls, Dan. And we're talking about Smith just slowing down just a bit. And that's, that's what you see right there. He drives the ball to the basket. In the first half, he wasn't completing the drive. He was pulling up for those little floaters. So Baycott's third with just better than two minutes gone. Burns is out. Dewana has checked in for Coach Keats. Meanwhile, Terquavion Smith, who's got five straight games of 20 or more, eight total on the season, completes the three-point trip. He's got a dozen now. And here's North Carolina State coming with the pressure. Yep. Tied at 38 now. Caleb Love hit a three late in the first half. That's his only marker of the day. Off the screen, another triple away. Spins off, black cross the glass. Got the rebound, draws the Wolfpack foul on the stick back. And it's on to Quavion Smith. It'll be his third. So now all of a sudden, the Wolfpack's one-two punch has got three each. And Carolina's inside. Big has got three. That is a hard matchup for Terquavion Smith. He's matched up against Leaky Black, and yes, he can stay in front of him out on the perimeter, but when that ball goes up on the board, Smith has to get in position to block out Leaky Black. He didn't that time, picked up his third foul on a reach. Just Carolina's second miss at the free throw line in 16 tries. On the front end of the two-shot chance for Black. And the second one good. He's now got five in the ball game. Three of four line shooting. And now with three personal fouls, does that make Smith a little more tentative offensively? You don't want to pick up that fourth foul, get in a charge. Right. And with Burns on the pitch, it suddenly feels like a very perimeter-driven game now for NC State at the offensive side. And there's Joyner, a spot up two that's cleanly through. He's got five. Transfer from Ole Miss out of Abbeville, Mississippi. Well, West certainly... North Carolina State has the ability to play very effectively out on the perimeter. Joyner has struggled today, but if he can get it going, that'll be a big help for the Wolfpack. State in front by one. Here's Love on the drive, and Casey Morsell reached in and draws the foul, and that's before Love hit the acrobatic shot. It'll be the third on Morsell. Well, Love is another guy, Wes, who doesn't need to settle for those three-point shots. He's got the quickness to get to the basket and the ability to finish. Wolfpack now has bought themselves a little bit of foul trouble here early in this second half. Fake off the catch and score. Off the line from Nance. 13 now for Armando. Yes, that is significant foul trouble with almost 17 minutes left in this yeah. game. 
Lots of threes on there, Dan. Smith, Kearns, and Morcell all with three. Joiner trying to drive the tempo, and he's got four in a row for the Wolfpack. And stay back in front on the jump shot. Let's see if North Carolina keeps applying the pressure. The Wolfpack trying to exert some defensive pressure, but North Carolina's attacking methods have created all this these foul puck trouble. Baycott against Dorana scores. Armando thought he got fouled. He's got eight and a half, 15 in the game. Dorana's more athletic than Burns, but he doesn't have the bulk Burns has, and so it's very hard for him to defend Baycott close to the basket. Teams are going back and forth. Joyner's got NC State's last four. Gant trying to drive Nance right of the lane. Threw it up, off the iron. Baycott the rebound, the foul on Dewana. That'll be his second. Five already on NC State in just better than four minutes from the foul category. Tar Heels by one in the ball when we come back. Next on behind me back to Smith Center in Chapel Hill where the crowd is just being told that Armando Baycott has become Carolina's all time leader in double doubles. Now with his 61st surpassing Billy Cunningham. The list of the top five is pretty solid Bonner. I don't know about well, you. It's, it's a great list and you talked about Billy Cunningham sort of being a guy who helped change the game his athleticism was just something that you know wasn't that common in the early 60s. Kangaroo kid. What a great ticket. Oh, it's the best. Here is Love, Carolina, the ball, and the one point lead. Davis. Quick check to Baycott. Here he is at the post with Dewana defending. Armando rolling, changing direction, and Ebenezer commits the foul. It'll be his third. He becomes the fourth NC State player with three, with 15 30 to go. Dan, I tell you, at this rate, the Tar Heels are going to be living at the free throw line here in the second half. Well, Wes, like you say, that's their sixth foul already, and there's 15 minutes and 30 seconds left in the half. So here is Armando for the front end of a two-shot try. And that's cleanly through. Don't forget tonight at 7 Eastern after we wrap in Chapel Hill. Kelsey Riggs, well, she got all the national champs there. Joel Berry, Luke Hancock, Carlos Boozer. Recaps the day of this highlights and analysis and the ACC coverage you can only find in one place and it's nothing but net on ACC network and streaming live on the ESPN app. Well, West, just as North Carolina struggled to guard DJ Burns in one on one situations, now North Carolina State can't guard Baycott. Yep. And so Burns comes back in the game. Baycott and Davis have 33 of Carolina's 45. Here is Burns with the three, drives Baycott to the baseline and kisses it off the glass. Wes, he's actually a little better with that little hook shot than he is with that 15-foot jumper. He can make the 15-foot jumper, but he's much better going to the basket than falling away. 45-44, Tar Heels by one. Caleb Love, Orsell defending him. Love will take him all the way on the drive and score. Dan, that's one of the things you've been thinking about. Carolina's ability to drive the ball. Yeah, and particularly with North Carolina State in touch foul trouble, when you get a lane, and that was an excellent lane created by a Baycock screen, get the ball to the goal. Nance defending Burns, turns with the left hand, and Baycock pulls down the rebound. That's 11. Armando needs 17 today to become the Tar Heels all-time leader in that category. And here Burns has to be careful. Skip pass, Nance launches. Bounds away for the Morcell rebound. Joiner trying to find a seam. Reroutes, here's Burns at 17 feet. Missed badly. Baycock got a free one standing flat footed. He's better closer. Here is Davis all the way through, and it rolls in. First points of the second half for R.J. Davis. Kevin Keats, Carolina by five, 49-44 in front of a sellout house at Smith Center. We continue on ACC Network. It's bow time. 
Dan, sometimes we talk about two-man game. That's what Carolina's <laughs> getting today, two-man game. Well, Davis has been really efficient, Wes. Four out of five from the line. He's been fouled five times, and he's eight out of eight from the free throw line. And Baycott, Baycott, he started off strong early, and then he got in foul trouble, and now he's right back where he was. And here's Traquavion Smith. And Leaky Black trying to fight around, fight around to DJ Burns. Pick and Black got a hand on the shot and blocked it. Blocking the shot might have been easier than going the city block to clear Burns. <laughs> Here is Davis on the drive, throws it up. I thought he was going to get another circus shot to go in. And instead has drawn the foul on Joyner, which is his second and the seventh on the Wolfpack with 13.24 to go, Dan. But Leaky Black with another terrific defensive play. Well, he fights around the screen and then just keeps following. And the guy who helps make that play is Nance, who switched on the screen, got Traquavion Smith to slow down to allow Black the chance to catch up. And West, the only thing that's a little concerning here is R.J. Davis, R.J. Davis seems to be fiddling with that index finger on his shooting hand, and that's the one that he hurt early in the season. <laughs> front end of the one and one largest lead for Carolina Davis now three and a half 19 in the game and this guy's been on a tear for coach Davis really since mid-December pushed the point total almost three four points and you saw the increase in percentage from the three-point line well, he's got 20 today and West, 10 of those 20 coming from the free throw line. Yep. So he has been extremely aggressive in the attack. Almost seven minutes gone in the second half. This Kevin feels, his team needs a basket, man. This feels like one of those turning points, Russ. Ross a three, too strong, rebound. Davis had a shot at it, tried to make the save, did the Nance. West, now Ross made one of those threes earlier, but in that kind of a critical situation, I don't know that that's the shot you want if you're the Wolfpack. Here's Nance. Bounce pass, Black attacks Burns, draws the foul, and that's four on DJ Burns with 12.45 to go in the ballgame. Well, West Jaquavion Smith almost picked up the foul, coming around trying to get the steal. Kevin Keats looking down his bench. He's trying to figure out what he should do. He's going to put Dewana back in the game. This is where the injuries to Dusan Mahorchic and Jack Clark really impact NC State. Free throw by Black is good. Don't forget Saturdays are big for college basketball on ACC Network. And next week, our biggest Saturday of the year. 1 o'clock Eastern, NC State in Wake Forest from Winston-Salem. Then Duke and Georgia Tech from Atlanta at 3 o'clock, presented by Food Lion. And then the rest of the quadruple header, Tallahassee at five for Clemson and Florida State, offered to you by Subway, and then Dan and I will be at the Castle in Blacksburg for the Orange and the Hokies. Four big ACC games next Saturday on ACC Network and streaming live on the ESPN app. Gresham, you just get the impression right here, this is almost a must-score possession for North Carolina State. Here is Tequavion Smith. Joyner launches from in front. And Love had the rebound. They may have to go to the deck. And let's see how Tommy Morrissey scores this. Last touch by Love. It'll stay with the Wolfpack. So, Wes, that'll count as only the second offensive rebound of the game for North Carolina State. Goodness. And we said North Carolina isn't the offensive rebounding juggernaut as a team, although right. Baycott is, that they have been in the past. But they are tremendous defensive rebounders. Foul call. And this is going to be on RJ Davis. It'll be his second. It is the second on Carolina. Now, Carolina has a staff that'll floor you even with a nine point lead here. But it's more of an offensive geared stat. NC State's one that floors you is that number you just mentioned, Dan, about the offensive rebound. And there is a Jeff Clark whistle on Leaky Black, which will be his second and third on the target. Hubert Davis's team has but four assists in the game then on 14 made baskets. 
But well, it Mar has been a dribble drive game. Well, or a pass it inside and yeah. then Armando Baycott worked. Yep. Here is Smith to the basket. Hard drive. Block the rebound. That's a tough shot. Sure was. Almost eight minutes gone. Leakey black to the basket and Ross pinned it on the window. State trying to get something in transition. Smith launches. Spins out on a three. Nance the rebound. Black tries to get in the front court. Does for Davis. Look at this three. Miss Bagley. The windows are wide open at both ends. Morcell will score. And a foul on Leaky Black off the Casey Morcell wow. basket. So NC State and Carolina swap missed baskets, and Morcell gets an N1 when we come back. In Chapel Hill, the Tar Heels are wearing uniforms from the 1960 era, but they honored the 30 year, and that can't be, anniversary of the 93 national championship team that beat Michigan in the Superdome to win the title. And honored jerseys of Eric Montross and George Lynch and Donald Williams. George, look up, man. We're trying to show you on television. <laughs> there he is. And there's Big Grits, old double O, out of Indianapolis. Who, if you remember correctly, Montross's dad was a former Michigan basketball player, and they beat the Wolverines for the national title. Bonner. Well, now that's that's a good little factoid, Wes. Yep. 53-47, a dozen for Casey Morcell on the and one as we went to break, and NC State to within six. Both these teams five and three in the ACC. All the net stuff is on the line here in the first of two meetings this year between the Wolfpack and Tar Heels. Love on the drive. Baycock follow good. Russ, and that's one of the reasons why it's such a great idea for Love to drive to the basket. He draws all the inside players to try to block the shot, and then nobody's there to block out Armando Baycock. If there's one guy in the country you need to block out, it's Baycock. And Joyner bangs home the jumper. He's got nine in the ball game now. Six here in the second half. And the Wolfpack back to within six again. Yeah, North Carolina State needs to force a couple of turnovers to try to generate a little bit of a run. And State's got a truck full of foul problems, by the way. Here's Baycott, Kawana holding post. Throw it back to him. Nance on the drive and the dunk with the left hand for Pete Nance. <laughs> Just five for Nance. Lead eight for the Tar Heels. Joyner tries to answer. Rimmed off, Baycott the rebound. Three away from the record on his 14th. Love. Fights into traffic, gets it to Black somehow, who scores. I didn't see a very big window to complete the pass, Dan. I didn't see any window at all. I'm sitting here thinking, where is he throwing that ball? On the drive, foul by Black, and Terquavion took a nasty fall under the basket to our right. And Kevin Keats is out. NC State trainer Ron Cooper quickly to Terquavion Smith. The foul on Black was his fourth. The fifth on Carolina, but the concern now for the Wolfpack is their star sophomore, Terquavion Smith. Wes, it looked like he landed really hard on his tailbone. And you see Burt Smith and Jeff Clark at the table. And that leaky black went to block the shot and the, it comes down right across his face. Mm. And Wes, keep in mind that, you know, you're talking about basketball play and that kind of stuff. The officials here, they're looking to see if the contact there was excessive right. and or unnecessary. So even though he was making a play on the ball, if the officials decide that was excessive contact, 
then that goes from being a common foul to a flagrant foul. Right. Here's another look. So he's trying to block the shot clearly, and does he swing through? And as he follows through, he catches him right on the side of the head. And and while they're looking at this, Traquavion Smith is still down. Right. And Ron Cooper is out. And Kevin Keats is out. And I think they're. Tending to Terquavion Smith and. It's hard to tell exactly what. They're diagnosing here with him because of the view we have and. So forth and Doug Halverson who is the North Carolina basketball trainer. Is down to help Ron Cooper. His colleague at NC State here. And. Wes and they may be asking for the. Uh, medical personnel the EMTs to come in sure. And it's beyond uh, our viewpoint here as to. To what the injury is for to we certainly don't want to speculate here on. On the condition here what they're looking for but obviously shaken up on the play. And so. Wes, we really can't see what yeah. I mean he's behind the basket stanchion there. We really cannot see what they're doing. The only thing we can see is as he lays on his back there, he's moving his feet. Yep. The legs and uh, so forth. And uh, boy, this talented young man was making a a what I would call a typical Turquavion Smith basketball play. Without any question. Yep. And plenty of concern. From his teammates, as you would expect. And now, now we have the we're EMTs. seeing some additional emergency personnel coming down, and now a a backboard, if you will, is being brought out. But as Dan told you, we have seen his feet move. So we will step aside here as Terquavion Smith is being tended to underneath the basket here in Chapel Hill. North Carolina with a 10 point lead at 59 49. We'll step aside at Smith Center back after this. Here's the thing about the good times in life we don't always realize we're in them. 35 to go in the ball game. North Carolina leading 59 49. Terquavion Smith was injured on a drive to the basket. And Dan, we've walked through this play a little bit, but for those of you who've just dialed in here, another look. Well, Smith drives to the basket, and he is a defenseless player right there at that point. And Leaky Black comes through and swings his arm and gets him on the side of the face and. He goes down and what the officials after looking at that we were talking about whether the contact was excessive and or unnecessary that would be a flagrant one foul but after looking at it and looking at the result the officials have decided that that is a flagrant two foul mm -hmm. and by definition a flagrant two foul is excessive severe and or extreme and you see there dangerous contact right and certainly it you know the officials consider you see there the severity of the contact hard contact to the head injury potential when the player is vulnerable and he was a vulnerable player and clearly you have an injury situation and so the officials after looking at have determined that this will be a flagrant two foul on leaky black mm. and of course the big concern for everybody right now is the health of Terquavy on Smith but the penalty for a flagrant two foul is ejection from the game so leaky black uh, will be ejected from the game as a result of the flagrant two foul. Right, and they have uh, continued to uh, tend to Terquavion Smith below the basket here. And both benches have uh, kind of been informed of what the uh, resolve will be. Wes, well, and certainly there was no intention by Leaky Black there 
to, to cause an injury. He's trying to block the shot, and the contact was excessive. And so Smith went down. Mm -hmm. And Leaky Black wasn't trying to hurt anybody. This is yep. very unfortunate, but Leaky Black uh, wasn't trying to do that. Yep. So Smith is uh, now on a uh, stretcher that was brought out while we were away during a commercial break. And uh, they have taken all the precautionary measures here, the athletic training and sports medicine folks, both North Carolina and North NC State, have uh, combined here. And uh, the EMT folks in the building have uh, responded accordingly. And uh, here in just a moment, Terquavion Smith will be taken from the floor. As Dan told you, we did see his feet move, but now they have uh, strapped everything in for this uh, right out of the uh, building on the stretch. Right, and so to Fabian Smith will go from the building here and as you might imagine the applause from this full house at Smith Center for him. And our best wishes absolutely to Fabian. And Wes, you, you didn't see anything moving there, but they had everything strapped down. That's it, right. And Kevin Keats and Hubert Davis around their respective clubs. And now for Coach Keats, part of the challenge here, Dan, is a fallen teammate in the emotion that that brings, and yet you got to go back on the floor and you're down 10 with under 10 to play. Wes, I, I really don't know how you handle a situation like that. So, NC State will have the ball. Ladies and gentlemen, the foul is on Leaky Black. And there'll be no warm up period here for the delay, so we'll go right to play basketball. And the flagrant two on Leaky Black, as Dan told you a moment ago. And. And West, the game will end with 9.45 to play for Leaky Black. West, uh, Craig Hamble, the sports information director for North Carolina State, just stopped by and said that Leaky Black has an elbow injury. To Quavion Smith. To Quavion Smith, excuse right. me, has an elbow injury and a neck injury. Okay. And that, that's the extent. That's exactly what we were told. We don't have any more information other than that. All right. And Leaky Black, of course, has, you know, he has left the bench because he's been ejected with the flagrant foul. So here is Jarkel Joyner, an 80% free throw shooter. So the penalty, of course, is two shots in North Carolina State to get the ball. Right. So there's the first of the two free throws. Yes, and interestingly enough, to get back to basketball, that is only the fifth free throw attempt of the game. Now the sixth for North Carolina State. They've made all six, but North Carolina has made 21 free throws. Right. In this game. Yep. And Joyner has L.J. Thomas, Casey Morsell, Ebenezer Dewana, and Ernest Ross in the game. Left hand move in the basket for E.B. First bucket of the day for Dewana, the 6'11 junior from Ghana. And now Carolina. Lead is trimmed to six. Nance. So they to go cut, to Baycott. Baycott asking for the ball. Caleb Love, 10 to shoot, drives through traffic, block, and a whistle called, and I believe Ernest Ross has picked up his third. Nine on the Wolfpack. And a couple of free throws for Caleb Love coming up. Again, Caleb Love doing a nice job. Instead of hoisting the, the shot as the shot clock runs down, he drives the ball to the basket. And when you do that, you force the inside guys to come and help. And that, would, that will free up Baycott for those offensive rebounds. Instead, he draws the foul. Now the 22nd made free throw for North Carolina. They've outscored North Carolina State 22 to 6 from the free throw. Caleb Love now with half dozen in the ball game and second to rattle back. The lead is seven. So where does the offense come from now? B.J. Burns on the bench with those four personal fouls. Smith out of the ball game. Morcell spots for two. Rebound for Nance. 
And Dan, how long can Kevin Keats wait with DJ Burns and the four fouls at this point? We'll see. Here's Davis. Well, Wes, you know if you put Burns back in the game, then North Carolina is just going to attack right. it. Here's R.J. Davis. Eight to shoot. Got caught in the air, but dumps in the corner for Dunn. And Armando Baycock the rebound. Second chance for the Tar Heels. Love thought about the punch on the drive against Morcel. Backs it out. Here he goes. Tries to beat Morcel. High flyer, no good. Baycock collects, draws the foul. Yes, he's got to be close to that record, doesn't he? Chasing it hard. Two on Gant. Ten now. On the Wolfpack, so two shots nonetheless for Armando Baycott, who has now pulled down his 16th rebound to tie Tyler Hansbro with 1,219 all time. And the first of the two free throws, good. For the senior from Richmond, who's now got 20 points and 16 rebounds. Well, Wes, he's well on his way. There's still eight and a half minutes left in this game. He's well on his way to a 20-20 game. He sure is. Second free throw good. Tar Heel lead back to nine. Morsell. There was just not much offense out there on the court for North Carolina State. Joyner step back at D2. And Nance had a shot at it. Here's Love on the run out. Across for R.J. Davis. Baseline floater. Off the mark. Gant pulls it away. Wolfpack trying to get the transition. And Morcell will drive it. Thomas got the rebound. Put it back up. And R.J. Davis comes away with it. And Caleb Love, Love is, down. is down underneath on the baseline. Yes, I did not see what happened. And at the under eight, we're going to get a timeout anyway, but... Tommy Morrissey and Bert Smith get timeouts called. We'll step aside in Chapel Hill. <laughs> 53 with 740 to play. And while we were away, Dan, they went to review the Casey Morcell drive. Well, as Casey Morcell drives to the basket, Wes, you can clearly see in the replay that he wards off with that right arm, and that he hits Caleb Love right in the face with that right arm. And as the officials went over to review, Wes, and what they decided was it was a flagrant one personal foul. And flagrant one is what we were talking about before, excessive and or unnecessary, and that's what the officials decided. It was an excessive play by Casey Morsell. Now, once once the, they didn't make a call, there was no foul called on that play, so they didn't make a call. Right. And so when you go over to review a play where there was no call made, you can't come back and say it's a common foul. There was right. no common foul called, so you have to, it's either a flagrant foul or it's nothing. In this case, it's a flagrant foul. The penalty is two shots and the ball, but since North Carolina already had the ball, they're going to pick it up here and get it inbounds at half court. Yep. And by the way, that was also 10 fouls on NC State. And, of course, there's no basket for North Carolina State. Shot by Dunn, got knocked away, scooped up. Here's Thomas. 11-point lead for Carolina is the largest of the day. That's 64 to 53. Joiner couldn't get through against DeMarco Dunn. 6'5 sophomore in now with Love and Davis. So Carolina playing with a very three-guard flavor after the black ejection. And the rebound record belongs to Armando Baycott. Here's Davis. Nance. Here's Baycott on the catch. And now Love going baseline on Morcell and Gant will pull down the rebound. Listen again, if you're North Carolina State, where are you going to get offense? Joyner looking for a Dewana screen with the out route. 
Morsell, 10 to shoot. Great job by Nance to get over there. By Nance. Here's Love. Caleb tries to take Gant on the drive and will draw the foul from Greg Gant. It'll be his third. With 6.09 to go, free throws coming for Caleb Love on the third against Gant, but Armando Baycott has become North Carolina's all-time leading rebounder here this afternoon, Dan, and their double-doubles leader all-time. And there is Psycho T from Poplar <laughs> Bluff, Missouri. Uh, some pretty good names on that list, and Armando Baycott, just a tremendous rebounder, Wes. Yep. And he's, I mean, he's such a factor, and North Carolina goes to him, and he's so hard to defend on the inside. Well, when you have a guy on the inside who can get you 20 and 20, and, you know, that's the way Tyler Hansbro was. When North Carolina needed a basket, they could throw him the ball, and he could either get, he either could score or go really get to the free throw line. He was a tremendous free throw shooter as well. Yep. Joiner. For Morsell. Wolfpack needs a basket. It's been almost four minutes since they've scored. Here is Burns playing with the four fouls. And Nance will pick up the foul. That'll be his first. That is six on Carolina here in the second half. And a 13 point Tar Heel lead. Well, Nance got called for the foul because he's taking his forearms and he's pushing back against DJ Burns. Burns. Off the quick inbounds pass. Left hand turn and one for big DJ Burns. So the foul on Nance will be his second. That's seven on Carolina. Burns will go to the line for the and one. Well, Wes, the Wolf Pack is still in this game. They need to generate some turnovers and get some easy baskets. Free throw by Burns is good. Dan, I saw Tyler at halftime. His health is back toward 100%. Good. And uh, he's thinking about trying to continue the pro career, but he's also popular co-host of the Sleephawk Worldwide podcast that you want to listen to <laughs> in your travels. The Sleephawk Worldwide, Worldwide podcast. podcast. That's right, yeah. He and uh, his buddy Brandon Staten. Here is the miss and in transition joiner. NC State trailing 10 ahead of five minutes to go. Burns, baseline, got the roll. Tell you what, DJ Burns, you see him live, you realize what the hype's about, don't you? Well, you sure do. And Wes, Kevin Keats waited as long as he could, as long as he could afford to, and Burns has been the offense since he came in the game. Big fella from Rock Hills got 16, and Davis just beat him on the drive. He's got 22 now. And Burns has to stay away from a foul on a play like that. Right. And Davis knows it. Thomas. Here's Burns with Nance defending. Burns turns again left hand and scores. Nine and a half, 18 in the ball game for DJ Burns. And Nance is wondering how come I have to guard because number five has three fouls. Well, I understand that, but I'm talking about from Nance's <laughs> point of view. From the team point of view, I understand it thoroughly. Right. Here's the drive. Davis before the shot. Foul will be called by Jeff Clark. The play that started the day on the perimeter is now being contested at the rim, Dan. But Davis just does such a great job. He stretches out there. Burns does a good job to stay away. But here's D.J. Burns on the offensive end. There's not really very much more that Nance can do. He makes him stop. He's outside the lane, for heaven's sakes. And he turns and makes that little jump hook. A couple of free throws for R.J. Davis. And the first one's good. To Dan's point, he's now got 11 points today at the line. He's got 23 in the ball game, And his tear continues. Junior from White Plains, New York. His dad was a 2,000-point scorer at Mercyhurst College. And 2,118 points. Wow. That gene has translated well for his son. And North Carolina has made a season-high 30 free throws today, Wes. Ten-point lead, under four to go. Joiner a three. Back rim, and Baycott another rebound. 
That's 18 rebounds for Armando Baycott. Here's Caleb Love for Dunn. Nance wraps it in for Baycott, who lost a handle on it to Morcell, who saves it to Joyner through the legs of Baycott. How did he get under there? And Jarkel Joyner, the foul, and the basket. So NC State cuts it to eight, a chance to draw to seven when we continue in a moment. Subway keeps up in the game with the Subway ACC Network Basketball presented by Subway. Subway's upping their game with the All-Star Subway Series menu. Just order by name or number. With Dan Bonner, West Durham, Smith Center in Chapel Hill. North Carolina leading NC State as we rejoin you in this 243rd meeting between the two schools. In our game summary, we've had a flagrant two and an ejection for Leaky Black against Terquavion Smith, who has a neck and wrist injury for the Wolfpack at the 945 mark. And Armando Baycott has become Carolina's all-time leader in double-doubles and in career rebounds here today. And not only that, Wes, he tied his own record. There's also a record held by Billy Cunningham for the most rebounds by a Tar Heel against NC State. It's 18. He did that last year in Raleigh. He's done it tonight. And Billy Cunningham at 18 back in 1965. Carolina, who's only hit one of their last seven, saw it knocked away with seven to shoot here in a seven-point game. And Wes, after everything that's gone on, it's sort of a surprise that it's a seven-point game. Here is Baycott. And the jump shot falls for Armando Baker. At seven and a half, he's got 16 now here in half two for 23. Well, West North Carolina State has been able to regenerate its offense. They've scored a couple of times in a row. They can't get a stop. Pass. Out front, here's Joyner, a straightaway deep three. Slapped out, blood, the rebound. I, I don't think any NC State possession at this point where Burns doesn't touch the ball is a good possession. That's Love. This. All the way on Burns. This kid, this kid hasn't always been pretty, Russ, but it has every bit of the amount of intensity that you'd expect yep. in a game between these two teams. And I think that foul. On Pete Nance, that's his third. That's nine on North Carolina. He's and probably a couple of free throws for joint. He's probably just happy to be fouling somebody other than Burns. Yeah, fair. Joyner knocks down the free throw. He's now got 15 in the ball game and is five for five at the line. So Burns just went out of the game, but I'm sure that that's a little offense defense substitution. Dewana coming in on the defensive end, and they'll get Burns back in there just as quickly as they can. You see, Joyner knocks down the free throw. He's been the guy. He's got 13 and a half, 16 now in the ball game. And quite frankly, this is where the offense is coming from. He and Burns. Yes. Davis tried to get it to Love, deflected Joyner. Nance collects. Hubert Davis taps his head to indicate the offense. Davis against Breon pass. Here's Baycott. Tried to skip it. Whoa, Love. Leaping catch with three on the shot clock. The floater good. That was some catch. Kind of was Caleb Love. <laughs> Tell you what, you won't see as good a catch in the NFL tonight as you saw there. 95 seconds to go. It's a nine point game. Fall away by Joyner. Rebounded by Nance. Morcell will follow Davis into the front court for the Wolfpack. The Wolfpack again, Wes, they haven't been able to get a stop. NC State knows any foul since Carolina to the line for two. Shot clock at 10, game clock at 111. Here's Davis now, five to shoot. Baycott in the corner, Nance blocked out of bounds. Dewana with six tenths of a second on the shot clock. Wes, you got to get this ball in. 
at point four, you can catch and shoot. So you have time to catch and shoot, but you don't have any time to do anything else. You gotta catch it and let it go. Lob, lob, caught it, missed the dunk, got the rebound. <laughs> and now does NC State foul? They're down nine. And there is Casey Morsell's fifth. We'll finish with a dozen points. Yes, and that's the dilemma you face in that situation. Yeah, you got to foul because that's the only way you can get the ball back. But if you get the ball back, this is this is exactly the kind of play that you need <laughs> with only 0.6 seconds left, and Love's just not able to convert it. So here is Love at the line, five of six at the line. Knocks the first one down. And what I was saying, Wes Morcell is one of the best offensive players, yep. and you need to foul, but if he fouls, he's out of the game. 13 now for Love. 10 here in the second half. Wes, and this has actually been a very impressive defensive performance by North Carolina. Second and good. You know, Hubert Davis told us this morning he wasn't worried about his offense, he was worried about his defense. Well, doesn't have to worry about this defense. 11 point lead, Joyner trying to find an alley against Nance. Fall away is good. Timeout, Kevin Keats on the Jarkel Joyner basket. 76 67 it is now with 41.4. Hubert Davis's team trying to get to 14 and 6, and maybe more importantly, Dan, this traffic at 6 and 3 in the ACC standings at night's end. But Carolina's day was geared around R.J. Davis and number five, Armando Baycott. Wes, we talked about Baycott coming in and how he had a chance today to break the record at North Carolina for double-doubles, the record held by Billy Cunningham. He did it. We talked about the fact he had a chance to break the North Carolina record for rebounds held by Tyler Hansbrook. He did it. He has been a tremendous factor that North Carolina State really hasn't had an answer for him except in the first half when he got in foul trouble yeah. and they had to take him out of the game. Well, he's got 23, R.J. Davis has got 24, 47 of Carolina, 76. Now, if you want to nitpick a little bit, the Tar Heels only have five assists here today, Dan. Well, Wes, I would choose not to nitpick because this yeah. has been a, this is the kind of a game, Wes, where North Carolina State is going to pressure you. You have to attack them. One of the reasons they don't have a lot of assists is they've been so much time at the free throw line. You don't get assists when you go to the free throw line. But this has just been a very intense game, a very physical game, exactly the kind of game you expect in a rivalry game. And we said before the game started, this game today might have been more important for North Carolina yeah. than for North Carolina State. Because they're the home team, Dan, in the quad factor here, or just because of the need for the quad one win? Well, they needed a quad one win. Yep. Davis double team. Here's Love. And there's a reach in on Jordan. Now, of course, Wes, if the quad, how many wins you have in a quad isn't going to be determined until the season is over because sure. it's a moving target. But at this point, North Carolina State came in today as number 27 in the net. And so if you're playing a team that's 27 in the net, that means it's a quad one game for you at home. So here, this is what North Carolina is looking at. People criticize them. They only have one quad one win. Well, this is an opportunity for a quad one win that it looks like they're going to get. Then the next two are quad two, and they're very important games. And then uh, Duke and Wake Forest, more opportunities for quad one wins. A very difficult stretch for North Carolina. Yep, and you see the 3-0 and in quad two, and then no problems with 3-4. and four. Well, they haven't lost except in, in quad one situations. Yeah, the schedule is excellent from that standpoint. 11-point game, final half minute. Joiner step out on Nance. And the rebound for Davis, but a foul called, I believe, against DeMarco Dunn. It'll be his third. Ten on Carolina, so a couple of free throws coming for Ernest Ross. Wes, and the important thing is we showed you what North Carolina's record was against the quad and their, their net. The important thing, your net isn't as important as your opponent's net. I'll give you an example from last year. Rutgers was 77 in the net, and yet they made the NCAA tournament. But the reason that they made the NCAA tournament is they were 6-6 six and six in quad one games. Right. And so 
the quad one is that that's the coin of the realm that's the that's what everybody's looking for so you got to get those wins and this at the present time will be considered a quad one win for North Carolina you see Ernest Ross first free throws of the day knocks them both down not a particularly good free throw shooter but Ross is maybe one of the most improved players on Kevin Keats's roster given kind of the climate with injuries and whatnot for NC State who gets Notre Dame on Tuesday night by the way in Raleigh and there's a backcourt foul or frontcourt foul on Joyner which will be his fourth. Wes and if you're if your opponent's rank is one through 30 and you beat them at home that's a quad one win so North Carolina State is 27. Now if your opponent is one through 75 and you beat them on the road and you on the road then that's a quad one win so for North Carolina State this would be a quad one loss. So a quad one loss really doesn't hurt you that bad. Yep. And Baycott will come out. And a hug from Hubert Davis. Boy, what an afternoon for Baycott. Well, and I thought Hubert Davis and Armando both yesterday spoke to local media here in the Chapel Hill and the Triangle of North Carolina about what it means to do this at North Carolina and the heritage of the program and all the players that have been here to get not only the double-double record but certainly the rebound record and Baycott said I want to do it at home I don't want to wait for a Tuesday night trip to the JMA Wireless Dome in Central New York to play Syracuse so Armando delivered and Carolina did 11 point victory for the Tar Heels to go to six and three and 14 and six NC State will go to five and four and 15 and five then well, again a, a quad one win for North Carolina a quad one loss for North Carolina State but a very intense physical game as we said the kind you expect from a rivalry game and the only thing here is